Let's start on time. Hey, thank you so much. Am I on? Am I on? Yep, I am. Thanks so much again for joining us today. Uh, this is a great li uh, live presentation with the very popular Steve Bigelow, who will be coming up here in just a moment. My name is Greg Lewis. I'm the marketing director for Metastock, and I want to take just a second before we start to remind everyone to like and subscribe. Just click on that uh, subscribe button and then the little bell, and you'll be notified every time we do this, and we do this two or three times a week, so don't hesitate to do that now. As well, don't hesitate to chat with us during the presentation. We encourage all your questions and uh, say hello. Chat, say hello, uh, give us feedback. So anyway, with no further ado, let's start this presentation. Hey everybody, hope you're doing well. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, whatever it happens to be for you. I hope you're doing well today. Thanks for coming. Let's go ahead and read a legal disclaimer. I have uh, one of my favorite uh, guests on today. So let's get straight to him. Today's demonstration is designed to instruct you on in using Metastock and the company's software plugins. It's not a recommendation to buy or sell, but rather guidelines to interpreting and using specific indicators and features within the software. The information, software, and techniques presented today should all be should only be used by investors who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Metastock shall have no liability for any investment decisions based on the use of the software, any trading strategies, or any information provided in connection with the with the company. Mike, thank you for liking and subscribe. It's good to have you here. Emra, it's good to have you here. Uh, for everybody here that's a go-to webinar, thank you. Uh, make sure uh, if you are on YouTube to like, comment, and subscribe. I think Greg already just said that, but it does help quite a bit. We appreciate it, and uh, uh, you will be rewarded with karma. So our guest today is Steve Bigelow. Steve Bigelow is somebody that's been doing business with Metastock. He's a friend of mine. I consider him a good friend, a mentor. Um, we've been working with him for more than a decade. Um, he um, He's great. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, a lot of the uh, the strategies I look for in stocks are the ones that he actually has taught me over the years. So let's go ahead and get him on here. Let's have him. Uh, uh, let's have him teach us a little bit today. How are you doing today, Steve? Good, great, uh, Jeff. Yeah, thank you for having me on tonight. All right, awesome. tech analysis. Now, if you've got questions, I've got the question box up. So feel free to ask questions as uh, uh, we're doing this. But uh, we're going to do the Doji, which is one of the twelve major signals, and. Uh, what I discovered uh, through the years is out of the 50 or 60 candlestick signals, you only need to learn these 12. Now, we're going to concentrate on the doji because it's easy to recognize. And there's a very simple doji rule. The price will usually move in the direction of how they open after a doji. So that allows you to create or expect uh, signals or patterns that work very effectively. We're going to look at the best friend, the left-right combo, the doji sandwich, a flutter kicker, and a series of dojis, which all tell you when there's a high probability trade result about to occur. These are the patterns. There's about six of them. So if you see a signal with a doji confirming a pattern, it just makes that much more uh, probabilities that you're going to be in the right place at the right time. So before we start, here is the most effective indicator along with candlestick analysis. We call it the T-line. The T-line acts like a Fibonacci characteristic where it acts like a natural support and resistance level of human nature. So when you put, uh, uh, when you put the combination of candlestick signals, which are the graphic depiction of human nature, and you will put the T-line on, which is the, the uh, natural support and resistance level of human nature, that combination becomes a very powerful uh, trading platform. So anytime you see a candlestick buy signal and a close above the T-line, you can stay long until you see a candlestick sell signal and a close back below the T-line. Or conversely, if you see a candlestick sell signal and a close below the T-line, 
you can stay short until you see a candlestick buy signal and a close back up above the T-line. So there's a caveat to that, which is part of the uh, uh, the analysis or the professing of the Japanese rice traders telling, or telling us where do most people buy? They buy exuberantly at the top. So just a caveat is that the further away you move from the T-line, the higher the probability is going to come back and test it. So if you start seeing signals way up in the overbought area, that far away from the T-line, you know the probabilities are pretty strong that as soon as that signal confirms, meaning trades lower, it's heading back to test the T-line area. So the uh, doji represents indecision between the bulls and the bears. It's basically where they open and close the price at the same uh, level. Now, I say open the price. That can be on any time frame. Candlestick signals work just as effectively on a one-minute chart as they do a monthly chart. Candlestick signals are the accumulative knowledge of everybody buying and selling during a specific time frame. Uh, Ravi, the uh, T-line is the eight exponential moving average. You put it on your chart just like you would the 50-day simple or the 200-day simple. So there's different uh, candlestick uh, signals or doji signals. Um, and it basically tells you they've opened it and closed it at the same level. So, again, we go back to where do most people buy? They start buying exuberantly at the top, as we saw in Tesla a while back. And you can see that it was way too far away from the T-line. So we've got a very simple process that when we know we have that alert, that we're too far away from the T-line, we flip to a shorter time frame, the 10-minute chart. And it's... The 10-minute chart is going to look just the same as this. And when they start backing off and closing the 10-minute chart below the 10-minute uh, T-line, you start taking profits. Whoops, there it was. So as long as you stay above the T-line, you put your stop below the 10-minute T-line. As soon as it comes back through that level, you know it's time to be out because you are already alerted to the fact that you were too far away from the T-line. So the nice thing about the signals is we can look at resistance levels and see where a doji occurs. And basically, if we see a doji in the overbought condition, there's a very simple rule, the doji rule. It's going to move in the direction of how they open after a doji. So if it opens lower the next day, where do you think the next likely target is going to be? At least back to the T-line. So you just take profits. Same scenario. You're back up to this resistance level and they do a big doji, long-legged doji, if it opens lower the next day, you take your profits. If you see a doji in the overbought area, get ready to start taking profits, especially if you see a long-legged doji. Remember, if a doji means indecision, a long-legged doji means great indecision. And when you see that in the overbought area, that's what human nature does. That when you start seeing indecision in the overbought area, start taking your profits. So the bigger the signal, the more compelling you get ready to start closing out, especially if it opens lower the next day. Now, this one is enhanced because look where the indecision occurred as soon as it was playing around with the 200-day moving average. Or if you see a doji in the oversold area, one of the truisms about candlestick analysis is the bigger the signal, the more compelling there's a change of investor sentiment. So you can see where you were in the oversold area. The next day, let's say a doji, a doji, and opens positive. The doji rule, they're going to trade it in the direction of how they open after a doji, which is much more uh, confirmed by the fact that you're down here in the oversold area. The Japanese rice traders have a very simple philosophy. If you see a candlestick reversal signal, in the oversold area, the probabilities are pretty strong. You're going to see an uptrend. If you see a candlestick sell signal in the overbought area, the probabilities are pretty strong. You're going to start seeing a downtrend. So anytime we see a pattern, like a wedge formation, there's the doji right at the end of this wedge formation. What's this wedge formation telling us? Lots of indecision. What's the ultimate signal that tells us there's indecision? the doji. And how do we know whether to go long or short? 
when they open this lower the next day, the doji rule said you could be shorting this stock. You can see as part of a uh, an other, I want to say, a multi-day pattern. This is called an evening star signal. A big up day, usually up in the overbought area, a day of indecision, and then the third day closes more than halfway down this candle. That's telling you the bears have taken control, and notice how we were alerted to it by the fact that we had a doji up here. So anytime we see a doji in the overbought area, you start looking for sell signals. So here's how you greatly enhance the probabilities of being in a right trade at the right time or getting out of a out of a, or taking profits on a trade. You see a candlestick reversal signal in the overbought area and it closes back below the T line. That's a pretty good indication there's been a major change of investor sentiment. A doji, and this is where I always say observe the obvious. If we know the doji is an indecisive trading and it's occurring right smack dab on a level like the 50 day moving average that everybody else is watching, if it opens positive, if you were short, you covered your short. If you're thinking of going long, you can think about going long because where's your first likely target? Back up to the T line. If it closes above the T line, you know you're now in a strong uptrend. So a doji followed by a gap up, we call your best friend. The reason for that is there's two factors. One, the probabilities of it going into an uptrend is extremely strong. And two, the magnitude of that uh, uptrend is gonna be extremely strong. So here we have a doji in the oversold area and they gap it up. What do most people hesitant to do. Boy, I don't want to chase this. It's up already pretty big. If we know it's a best friend signal setting up, we can be buying so we're taking advantage of that price move. A doji gap up, your best friend. Where did it occur? When everything was kind of supporting off the 50. And then the gap up told us that this resistance level was not acting as resistance anymore. It puts us in situations where the probabilities are extremely strong that we're now going to be in a, a strong uptrend. So this is just the evaluation of what human nature does based upon one signal, meaning the doji. There's 12 major signals, six longs and six shorts, to, to uh, give you high probability expectations of what's happening in human nature. Best friend signal gaps up closes above the T-line, breaks out through this level. Now we have a very simple rule. How long do we hold on to this? Until we see a sell signal and a close back below the T-line. So if you see a doji and bullish confirmation, that's good. Doji, hammer, bullish confirmation, that's good. Doji, best friend gap up, that's very good. So... If we see something like this, a bearish doji best friend, doji gap down, look where it gapped down, through the level that everybody was watching, and then the T-line. Now, the T-line is effective because we know it acts like a natural support and resistance level of human nature. Nobody has the T-line on their chart. So notice how often the T-line acts as a support. And that's significant because... Nobody has that on their chart. That tells you that's kind of a natural support level of human nature. Anytime I see a pattern, like a fry pan bottom pattern, which looks like a big fry pan bottom, what can, constitutes a breakout? A strong price move. What's the best friend signal indicate? A strong price move. So even though this stock may be up 3, 5, 10, 20, 80 percent, we can be buying because we know exactly what should be happening based upon a best friend signal breakout of a fry pan bottom. We can also recognize when a pattern is setting up. We know the J hook pattern is a strong price move with a pullback. And then if it starts back up, we know that wave three is going to be the same magnitude as wave one. 
and what gives us our uh, inclination that we're in wave three. Look at our doji best friend gap up through the T line. What's that tell us about our trajectory? Now we have a high probability wave three in progress. So essentially, all this really does is puts us in situations where the probabilities are extremely strong that we're going to be in the right direction, and not only in the right direction, but in a strong direction in the in the direction we expect. A bearish doji sandwich, I'm sorry, a bearish doji best friend, doji gap down, tells you there's going to be a lot of force to the downside. A doji gap up best friend tells you there's going to be a lot of force to the upside. Whoops. Oh, I did. I guess I did show you this one, Jeff. There's our hanging man signal, and they gap it down and do a doji right below the T line. We went short. Now, a lot of people say, man, do you want to chase something that's already down big? Well, we know the probabilities are if they're gapping this down after a doji below the T line, they're probably selling it off. We were shorting this on the open, and today it did a doji right here that gave us another indication that the and I'll get to that chart I'm getting ahead of myself so a left right combo is a doji followed by a bullish engulfing signal this is one of your what we call your top rank signals and patterns we know that we could be buying immediately on a positive open because the this combination right here gives you extremely high probabilities you're going to be in the right direction at the right time. Oh boy, I'm Pete. I'm guessing it's the close of the of the uh, yeah the close of the uh, candle. A spinning top is the same as a doji. It just has a little bit bigger body, but they both represent the same thing indecision between the bulls and the bears so you can even see up here where you had doji doji bearish confirmation this was telling us it was time to take profits even though we haven't weren't closing below the t-line we knew at least where our first likely target was going to be back to the t-line there's your hanging man followed by a doji there's your left right combo that started the uptrend so if you were short there, what we want to see in most of our candlestick signals is confirmation the next day. The left-right combo, you don't need confirmation because it's got such strong probabilities that prices are going to be moving in that direction. But if I was short and I saw this happening, I'd be closing this even though it hadn't confirmed the next day yet because more than likely it was. So here's how you use that indecisive trading to your advantage. There's kind of a flat handle. There's a doji, doji, bullish, left, right combo, close above the T-line. Now we can see a scoop pattern setting up. We know what the results of a scoop pattern is. A slingshot effect to the upside. We also know that if we saw a left, right combo, we have an extremely high probability it's going in this direction, which tells us our scoop pattern is probably confirming. That tells us we can be buying immediately on positive trading the next day telling us two things the scoop pattern is breaking out it's confirming our left right combo it's telling us our uh, t line's not acting as a resistance and how long do we stay in this until you see a sell signal and a close below the t line or if you start moving too far away from the t line you start uh, you go to your 10 minute chart and see when it's starting to trade back below the 10 minute t line so if you can see where a resistance level is, and you can see there's indecision, you get ready to start taking profits. That's what the doji does for you. It can be in a multi-pattern. Very educating. Yes, this, Pete, yes, this recording is available. So you can see how we had a doji up here, and then a, so you have, basically an evening star signal. That told you that if it opened up here after this doji, 
the nice thing about candlestick analysis is it gives you very logical places to stop out of a position. So remember our doji rule? It's going to move in the direction of how they open after a doji. That's a little less effective if you're up here in the overbought area. So if it opened positive, fine and dandy. But where do you set your stop? Right here where it closed. Because logic says if it comes back down through there, the selling after the doji is in progress and another sell signal is going to be forming. A bearish left-right combo closing below the T-line. You can be shorting immediately. Where do you cover your short position? Look at your doji in the oversold area, and it opens positive the next day. If you're not covering right in here, the safety stop is if it comes back up through the high of that doji, you want to be out of this trade. So you can start taking profits here, and you definitely get make sure you're out of all your trade uh, up at that level. The doji sandwich, very effective. Remember, the doji rule is the price will usually move in the direction of how they open after a doji. So if you see a bullish candle and then a doji, and look where it closed, right smack dab on the T-line. So what does that tell us? Well, we haven't broken this trend yet. But our doji rule says if it opens positive, it's going to trade positive. And our doji sandwich is that this candle right here is usually going to be the same magnitude as this candle right here. So if that's the case, we can start buying on positive trading because it's telling us we've got a doji that's going to a doji sandwich that will probably close higher. Tells us our T-line's not acting as resistance. And it told us that this level right here is now breached. We're in an uptrend. So anytime I see a doji, you can see how you had to buy signals down here, a hammer, bullish engulfing, a doji, and then it trades positive the next day. There's your doji sandwich confirming that you're going to have more upside. And I say confirming, when you see a doji sandwich, the probabilities are extremely strong that the, the trend is going to continue. Bullish Harami, one of the 12 major signals. Where did it occur? Right smack dab on the 200-day moving average. What's that tell us? That tells us we can visually recognize using candlestick signals when the selling has stopped. And now what do we look for? Well, the next day it was a little indecisive. But then it traded positive after that, a doji sandwich. What did that imply? Again, closed above the T-line, closed, uh, breaking out this level, and told us there's probably going to be more upside after that. If you see a doji occur right smack dab on a level that everybody else is watching, it makes it very easy. If it opens positive the next day, we know we've got a doji sandwich. What's that tell you about the level everybody else is watching? That's breaking the uh, resistance level of the 50. We can be buying immediately knowing that everybody else is going to start coming in because they saw that it broke through the resistance level of the 50. Again, a doji sandwich right smack dab off a, uh, right out at a major resistance level, confirming our fry pan bottom is now going to be producing an uptrend. So, again, the doji sandwich produces expectations, more upside. The bearish doji sandwich does the same. If it opens lower, the doji rule says it's trading lower. Our doji sandwich says there's going to be more downside. Very simple process. And then if one doji means indecision, a series of dojis means much greater indecision. So if you see something like this occurring, where you have a bunch of dojis, then you have doji, doji, close above the T-line, what'd that tell you? I told you that indecision is over. Now that starts your uptrend. So anytime you see something like this, get ready for them to break one way or the other. And with you being in the oversold area, more than likely it's going to occur to the upside. Now. This one is even in a little bit more advan or advanced uh, analysis. We call this the cradle pattern. You can see the downtrend, you can see the headboard, and you can see the flat 
bed and then the footboard. This usually means this cradle is hanging be between two trends. This is a very strong probability you're going to be in an uptrend. Yeah, so the dojis have that investor sentiment already built into the signal that anytime you see a uh, doji, especially in the oversold area, you can scan the next day for, yeah, for your scan parameters. If you're looking for uh, uh, your stochastics in the oversold area and you put in the doji formula, the doji in the oversold area, now all you have to do is put that on your watch list and the next day, scan to see which one of those have moved up the biggest, producing your reversal. It allows you to also identify when a pattern is confirming. Again, when you see that doji, here's wave one. Here's indecisive wave two pullback. Here's that doji best friend gap up through the T-line, producing wave three. These are all visual enhancements that dramatically improve the probabilities of knowing that you're going to be in the right trade at the right time. And once again, not only the right trade at the right time, but a very strong price move. So if we can calculate that's wave one, we can calculate what our, our magnitude or our move going into wave three. So I call this two plus two analysis. Anytime you see a doji gap up coming out of a pattern, that's just that much more advantageous to see the bulls have taken control. You see the J-hook pattern setting up. You had a doji bullish confirmation, and then look where your doji sandwich occurred. Just as they were breaking out, what'd that tell us? Probably wave one, now wave three is in progress. So the combination of patterns using the doji is even that much more enhancing. This is what we call a McMuffin. Now, obviously, a McMuffin is not a term that the Japanese rice traders used. It's one that we put together because look at your morning star signal. Big down day, a doji, the third day closes more than halfway up this candle. Not only did it close more than halfway up this candle, but it closed well up above that candle and closed above the T-line. The next day, it did a doji. You could be buying on this day because this is your McMuffin. This is a morning star signal followed by a doji sandwich. And if we know a morning star signal is one of your 12 major signals that's going to start an uptrend, and we know the doji sandwich is going to have further confirmation of more upside, if that's your morning sandwich or your McMuffin, that's just kind of a double whammy of saying that this is definitely going to be starting your uptrend. So anytime we see that McMuffin setup, we can be buying with much more aggressiveness, knowing that things are going to be moving uh, with a much higher degree of probability in the right direction. So anytime we see a, a, Mc, a Morningstar signal, a doji sandwich that also closes above the T line, just that much more confidence to be may be starting to buy. Uh, on that next trend. So there's your fry pan bottom using the doji best friend gap up. There's your J hook pattern using the doji best friend gap up. And there's your doji at the top with the doji rule saying if it opens lower the next day up here in the overbought area, start taking profits. So again, this is not rocket science. Human nature works the same way time after time. All we're doing is identifying how to use them correctly. We call this two plus two analysis. A doji followed by a gap up through a resistance level off the uh, 50. That's just putting all the pieces together to come up with the right, uh, uh, right conclusion. So here's that same scenario. If we see a doji, look at our doji hammers. And this is where we have a lot more uh, added benefit of being able to observe what's happening at technical levels that everybody else is watching. Hammer dojis bouncing right smack dab off the 50. Then that gap up through the T-line 
what'd that tell us? Well, we know the probabilities are if you see a candlestick buy signal and a close above the T-line, you're going to be in an uptrend until you see a candlestick sell signal and a close back below the T-line. Now, getting off base here a little bit, when would we, why would we know to take profits up here somewhere versus when it came back below the T-line? Because of the simple philosophy of the uh, Japanese rice traders that say, where do most people buy? They buy exuberantly at the top. So when you start seeing gap ups in the overbought condition, you get ready to put your stops in at places where if it came back, it's, it's probably starting your profit taking. Another morning star signal followed by a gap up. A doji hammer, look where it bounced right off the uh, 200 day moving average, telling you you're probably back in an up, uptrend. No matter what trading platform you're using or whoever's advice you're using, if you put candlesticks on your charts, you're going to enhance your ability to analyze whether what they're recommending is working. It gives you a little bit more control of knowing what, what's happening in investor sentiment. What's the best time frame to use this? Any time frame, Bob. Depends on what you're trading. I used to trade the E-minis off a one-minute, three-minute, ten-minute chart combination. Right now, I trade. If I trade intraday soybeans, cattle, the dollar, I'll use the ten-minute chart. I'm a swing trader on my stocks. That means my trades are going to last anywhere from two to ten trading days. I'll use a uh, the daily chart. I'm buying or selling based upon what the daily chart is telling me. Then I'll flip to a 10 minute chart if I start moving too far away from the T line. That if we're way up in the overbought area and it's shooting up at that point, then you flip to your 10 minute chart and let that tell you when, what time to or when to start taking uh, profits. Uh, the black candles are just a, a, a different method. This is a black candle because it opened. Uh, remember, uh, let, me, let me take a step back. A bullish candle is where it opens here and closes here. Closes above where it opens. A bearish candle opens here and closes below where it opens. That creates the red candle. A black candle is where it opens here and closes here, but it's still closed above or it's still positive on the day. So they, they just give it a different color. Okay, I think I got all the questions. Adoji Harami. So even though this opened positive and closed here, it did a Harami, which meant was what Western terminology says an inside day. But it's a Harami Doji. And what do we need for confirmation? If they open up positive, that tells you the selling has stopped and the buying has started. Anytime you see dojis in the oversold area, that's telling you there's indecision going on. Get ready to start buying or look for buy signals. So if I saw this close here and I did my scan at night and it showed that it uh, had doji doji and a close above the T line, I'm ready to buy on positive trading the next day. Now, that positive trading is not just blind positive trading or buying right out of the chute. Obviously, if this stock is opening positive the next day, but the Dow is opening down 240 points, probably won't rush into it. On the other hand, if the Dow is in an uptrend, and it looks like the pre-market futures are showing the Dow is going to open up another 80 points. And this is opening up positive. Yeah, I'm probably buying pretty quick as soon as I see that it's starting to trade positive. Whoops. I didn't realize I got already to that. Oh, so here's what uh, why we're showing kind of the individual signals. We're going to be doing a two-day training this Saturday and uh, Sunday. Now, I call this a two-day brain-frying, butt-sore session, but there's two eight-hour trading days where 
we go through candlestick analysis from start to finish, showing you all the 12 major signals, the high profit patterns, the top rank signals and patterns, how to use gaps effectively with candlesticks, where the logical stop losses are. And this is the important point that a lot of people need to learn. Remember, every money manager tells you to cut your losses short and let your profits run, but they never tell you how to cut your losses short and let your profits run. Candlestick signals do it very easily. We show the entry strategies of what improves the probabilities of being in a correct trade and the exit strategies when you should be back out of a bad trade. Uh, and we show when to take profits when we start seeing different uh, trajectories using uh, the candlestick sell signals. We do the trend market analysis and how to identify breakouts. Now, this, when you start, when you go from start to finish, you'll see the logical chronological order of what the thinking is of candlestick uh, of the Japanese rice traders. And the one thing that struck me when I started learning candlesticks was this makes sense. And the more I studied it, the more sense it made. So this is the one thing that you're going to, that people will find out once they learn candlesticks from start to finish is just, it's just simple logic put into a graphic depiction. Now, we have a very clever marketing program. Instead of paying the 497 for the two day session, we tell people become a member for $97 and then you get in for 297 or you save 100 bucks with the benefit that you'll be in the uh, our website for 30 days. So the worst case scenario is that if you don't like it after 30 days, you can uh, move on. But at least you'll have the knowledge of how to use candlesticks on your charts. But the benefit of the uh, our chat room and our website is I usually put out two or three stock picks every day. Not so that people have stock picks, but that we do it in a video format so they can see what the logic was of why that signal or pattern was setting up and why we were buying it. And the advantage of being in a chat room where you've got everybody looking for the same signals and patterns is that they identify. Today, somebody in the chat room pointed out that CYH was doing a J-hook pattern. So you can be buying early. Same scenario on Ruby. Again, this is the chat room advantages is, number one, you can identify or have people showing uh, good chart pattern setups. And two, if you're learning the process, you don't have to wait to have your questions answered. You can say, you can just type in and say, uh, uh, why is that a good pattern? And it's, somebody's gonna explain it to you. So your learning process is greatly expedited. So I tell people, join for 30 days, get a $200 discount on your, uh, uh, doing the, uh, the training session, and at least you have 30 days to put it into application to see if it works. I was going fast just so I could make sure I got done in time. Again, the reason I work with uh, Jeff and I have been working together is, and I'll let Jeff uh, explain all the uh, scanning processes and how they use the candlestick uh, uh, signals and patterns on those. Uh, on their their uh, scanning techniques. So that's about all I got. If there's any questions out there, we is... have some uh, YouTube questions. If you want to, oh, go ahead and take uh, Ravi's question right there, and I'll I'll round up a few YouTubes for you. Okay, is SL previous candle low? I don't know what that means. Stop loss. Oh, uh, depending on where you are. Let's see. Let me go back a few here, if I can. Uh, boy, I'm trying to think of. Oh, I goofed up. If I'm long this stock and I'm up in the overbought area, I start putting my stop at the previous day's low. Yes. Okay. So, again, everything that you do with candlestick analysis is just logic 
um, uh, put into a graphic depiction. And stock picks for intraday or swing trading, for whatever you want to use them for. We're not trying to dictate to somebody how they should trade. We've got day traders in our room. We've got swing traders. We've got long-term investors. So when we put out a recommendation, now you can figure out whether you want to day trade it or because uh, uh, you're essentially every time we put on a trade, we know the probabilities are greatly in our favor. We're heading in the right direction. All right. You got questions? Uh, All right. I do. Uh, Jim Valentine says, this isn't really a question, but uh, it's complimentary to you, so you're going to like it. it right. Steve says, "I'm." Uh, Jim says, Steve, I'm a fan of your technique of the doji followed by a kicker bar candle. Uh, Emren uh, wanted to know, what should the difference be between the opening and closing prices to have a doji? Uh, I, uh, yes. Yeah, all you have to do is visually see that it's indecisive. It doesn't really matter. So I would still consider that one, if everybody can see this chart, I would still consider that as a uh, oh, a, a doji. Because we can the, see your chart too. Yeah, but so it doesn't really matter what the, what the uh, magnitude of the, it, it just has to show indecision. Now, if the, the body is mostly a body, then it's not a doji anymore. It's just a, a candlestick uh, formation. But you'll be able to, it, it'll be something that if you look at it immediately and see that it's indecisive, that's that's going to tell you it's a doji type day. Okay. And Joom now says you're hilarious. <laughs> big, <laughs> big, big Chorney says, how much do the markets influence the outcome and effectiveness of a signal? Uh, well, it's the, it's not the outcome of the signal. It's, it's, uh, the signal is telling you what the outcome is based upon the market. So if the market is all of a sudden reversing and your signal that you, or the confirmation was telling you that it is that, well, that trading day is selling off. That means it's being influenced by the market, so it might not be confirming your signal. So there's a lot of times where you buy something that looks good, but at the end of the day, the sellers are there, you close out the position. It is the effective part of, again, getting you out of bad trades quickly, because I tell people, every single trade you put on is not going to work. A good percentage of them do, but it's just as important to understand when to close out a bad trade as it is to know when to stay in a, in a good trade. So the candlestick signals tell you when things sh should be working and when they aren't working, and then you close out the trade, take those funds and go on to another trade. All right. Um, the gym now also says, uh, I like the chart WYY. I don't know if you're uh, set up to look at charts now, but he wants you to know he likes to try it, I guess. Uh, let me see if I've got your... Let's do this. Whoops, can everybody see that? I guess I could make this bigger. We can see the meta. We, uh, that's a beautiful looking chart. It is, yep. <laughs> <laughs> and Mr. Uh, While you're pulling that up, Mr. Fancy Pants says, hey, Steve, it's Jason. I'm here. And I think okay. if you know who Jason is, his new nickname every time you talk to him should be Mr. Fancy Pants. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll keep that in mind, Jason. <laughs> uh, let's see. Why? W, what, I'm sorry. What was the symbol? W-Y-Y. All right. What do I need to put behind? Let me see if this I can one? find it. Yeah, uh, I don't. Uh, N w y y. Uh, it should just be w y y. It looks like. Is that weed point? White wide point. Yes. It doesn't look like it trades. Is that is that what your chart looks like? 
Uh, when I open up that symbol, yes, it's the same one. I don't know if that's the one, if we have the right symbol for Nachum now. But that's the only one I can find <laughs> for a symbol. W-Y-Y. W-Y-Y, -Y, but not Weyerhauser. Uh, all right. W-Y-Y, -Y, that, for some reason, that's a choppy chart. Oh, boy. W-Y-Y. -Y. Dot N for New York. Yes. For some I got, reason, a, uh, I got a chart that looks different than that, Steve. When, uh, let's go ahead and just type in WYY. That's really interesting. I'm looking at. Uh, see, type in WYY. And actually, maybe I'll just share my screen real quick. All right. Um, I think I've got a the right one, and I'm not sure why you don't. If I'm if I'm Frank, let's see candle profit systems. Go ahead and close. Uh, we'll just do this. Just change presenter. Me. Uh, show my screen, and you should be able to see my chart. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. I think this is what he wants. Okay. So, whoops. Now I let me make this bigger. All right, right now, you can see about two or three days ago, you had a doji lower open. Um, and so right now, I would be short this stock, but I'd be a little bit careful because re you're right now, oh, I'm, I'm using my cursor, um, which you can't see. You're getting right down to the level where it kind of bottomed out about three months ago. Right here. So right Right now, I would be short. Uh, if you put your stochastics on, it's, you're probably still heading down in stochastics. Yeah, let's do this. Big hello. <laughs> okay. Apply. Yes. Oh, no, cancel. Let's try that again. <laughs> Bigelow. Uh, well, that's all right. I, yeah. I, I would imagine you're still, you should stay short. And now you put your safety stop, depending on where your stochastics are, at today's open at the top of that candle. Because logic says if there's enough bullish pressure to bring it back up through that level, you want to stop out. And that's telling you that's you probably were at the support level. Okay, I got the stochastics finally, <laughs> but that, I think we're okay now. All right, I'll I'll go ahead and zoom in a little bit. We're right in the middle range of the stochastics. Yeah, so right so that would kind of tell me that with stochastics heading down, if this opens lower again tomorrow, I would suspect it's probably going down toward the 200-day moving average. This is what we call a blue ice failure. You notice that about four days ago, you failed at the 50 with a doji. About three weeks ago, you came down through that uh, the 50. And that's uh, where you explain uh, that you fell through the ice. Somebody was coming back up to find the hole they fell through. They couldn't find it, so they drowned. So they go to the, uh, the bottom of that pond, which is the 200-day moving average. And now that was coined, that phrase, blue ice failure, was coined by my late friend Dave Elliott of Wall Street Teachers. And I always tell the story to, that I could help people remember the blue ice failure by saying, how do you catch a polar bear? You cut a big hole in the ice, and then you take a can of peas and you spread it around the hole. And when the polar bear comes down to take a pea, you kick him in the ice hole. Now, obviously, it wasn't a very technical explanation, but people remember the blue ice failure. If you will pull up, uh, I think it's LL, Lumber Liquidators. Okay. That is it. You can see back around uh, February or January uh, 20th, where it first fell through the ice. Yep, and then it came back up, 
and about right there, yes, at, at where uh, around February 5th, there was your doji failure at the uh, 50. That told you they drowned and they were going to the next bottom of the pond down there at the 200. It's just a very high probability trade uh, setup. All right. Um, here's another bit of a question. Are you moving average exponentially or only the T line? Only the T line. The reason we have the 200 and the 50 simple moving average is because that's what every major money manager around the world uses to make their decisions about their portfolio. So we're not using those moving averages to make our decisions of what to do. We're using those moving averages for the graphics, the candlesticks to tell us what everybody else's decisions were at those levels. So those are, we came, a lot of people have asked, well, why don't you use exponential on the, the uh, 250? Because we're not using those to make our decisions. We're just graphically viewing what everybody else's decisions were at those levels. Uh, Evanar wants to know, uh, or says, uh, my trading got so much better with the T-line. Thank you, Steve. He actually uh, said Mr. Bigelow, but. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> actually, myself, I was the worst investor in the world before Candlesticks came along. I was even a stockbroker for eight years, and I got out of the business because I realized brokerage firms had no more ideas about what made uh, prices go up or down. And so when Candlesticks came along, I started realizing that uh, uh, that this was just common sense put into a graphic depiction, and I started making money with it. And then a few years later, one of my first uh, training students said, put the T-line or the 8 exponential on, and my returns were enhanced even much greater. So I, that's why I use that screen that says, if you've got a candlestick, uh, if you have candlestick signals that are telling you what's going on in investor sentiment, and you've got uh, the T-line that tells you where the natural support and resistance level of human nature is, that is an extremely high probability, powerful trading strategy. And I've made money with it ever since. Uh, and I made make good money with it because it takes your emotions out of your trades. Even though you might see a sell signal in an uptrend, if it doesn't close below the T-line, you just wait for it to, to the uptrend. The, the uh, I guess the, the rationale is the uptrend is still in progress until you see a sell signal and a close back below the T-line. All right. Uh, Akira wants to know, did you learn candlesticks in Japan? No. No. Okay. Uh, I learned it when I got out of the brokerage business. I was actually renovating and buying, renovating, and selling houses in uh, uh, Atlanta, Georgia. And one of my tenants dropped an antiquated uh, literature on candlesticks on my desk. And they said, you're a stock or we're a stockbroker. What do you think of this? And I thought anything as sophisticated sounding as candlesticks wasn't worth the time and effort to look at. But they kept badgering me. So finally, one night I had nothing to do. So I picked it up and looked at it. And the first thing that hit me was, man, this makes sense. And the more I looked at it, the more sense it made. So I've been investing for over 40 years, and there is, I've seen every technical analysis that you can come across, but the combination of candlestick signals and the T-line are probably the most accurate that I've ever seen. So I make a very good living just trading off the, that system. Eban R says, I bought your course a few years ago. It was my best investment ever. Thanks. Okay, well, thank you. And I would recommend if you haven't, well, I would recommend you go to the boot camp this weekend. Um, it's uh, some of, um, I love uh, listening to Steve. He does a great job. Uh, there's a link to the boot camp again. Uh, and I'm sure that Greg is scrambling to find that link so he can put it in the chat again. So there you go. Uh, in any case, I'd like to show the product for a minute. Um, Steve, do you mind? Yes, go ahead. Go right ahead. All right. Let me go ahead and uh, I will also join you with my camera on. <laughs> I, so I do just want to talk a little bit about this. This is a product that we de developed. The first version came out 
almost a decade ago, I think over a decade ago. And it's a product that we've had reviewed by um, Stocks and Commodities a couple of times. And it's a product that's been our one of our best-selling uh, add-ons from Metastock, uh, one of quite a few readers of Choice Awards. It's got a really good review from both Barbara Straw, Barbara Starr, sorry, and um, uh, another reviewer. Uh, oh man, I just lost his name. Anyway, they both looked at the program. I'm very proud of it. We worked on it uh, very hard. I remember that we had a lot of meetings with uh, Steve over Skype and uh, we were uh, with the programmer and worked out all of these patterns. So uh, in the product, we're gonna identify a lot of the patterns that uh, Steve talks about here. And we're gonna look at Doji at the top, Doji best friend, the uh, bullish flutter kicks, the bearish flutter kicks. And uh, you kind of get an idea of how those kind of look on a product or in the Metastock program right here. You'll notice that as we've got Lumber Liquidator up. Any of the patterns, like we show a doji top right here, we had an evening star that happened here. Any of the products that, uh, that uh, Steve works on, we actually kind of automatically draw on the chart for you. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we also have a pretty good explanation of what those are in what we call our expert advisor. Now, the expert advisor is right here, okay? There's not really a pattern that it's going to talk about today, so just give some generic information. But if I wanted to kind of like, for example, see a, an example of what a doji was, I can highlight any of these patterns, and it's going to identify and kind of help me understand what those are. So in this case with the doji, a doji is formed on the current bar. It's a representation of the open and closing prices were virtually the same. This represents the decision between the buyers and the sellers. A series of dojis would represent major indecisions, and traders should wait for a decisive move before trading, as dojis are likely to be present in both continuation and reversal patterns. So. We put a lot of the information um, in Steve's brain <laughs> into the product, and um, uh, the, the commentary will help you understand what's going on. Now, what I particularly like about this product is the, is the ability for to do scanning. So for example, I can scan um, any market I'm interested in, and I can find any pattern that I might be looking for. So if you're not familiar with Metastock, that's fine. Uh, right here is what we call our power console. Uh, the Metastock program has been rated as of this year, the highest rated software program in its price category. And it's only won that award for like 27 or 28 years in a, in a row. So, uh, it, but one of the things I love is because I trade a lot of Oshawa stocks, I love to be able to kind of go in and um, uh, one of the people in the chat, I can't remember his name offhand, said, I like the bearish kicker. If I want to be able to go in and find that, we call it the scanner. I'm going to go ahead and click on the scanner right here. I can come down here. And I'm just going to find uh, the scans that start with CPS. So you see Doji Dynamite. If I run this scan, it's going to look for Doji at the top, the Doji best friend, and um, left right series of combo and the series doji and you kind of see them all listed here we'll just run this one to give you an idea but there are several different scans that you can run what i'm going to do is i'm going to actually come in here and we'll run it against uh, actually i'm going to do i actually downloaded some data because it runs really fast uh, in the webinar room but i'll just do the s p 500 Okay, you notice I can do the optional stocks. We do support only about 300 exchanges globally. Uh, we do get a lot of customers that are looking to look at their mo local markets like London or uh, India or Australia. Those are all really big markets for us. But you can scan whatever you want. You notice that I just went through all 505 of the S&P 500 stocks. And I can actually see here in this grid view, which ones I have a doji at the top, uh, none of them did. It would have a one in this column if it was a doji at the top. A doji best friend, none of them did. But we do have a lot of left, right, bullish, left, right, bearish, series of bullish, series of bearish. What it just did for us is it actually went through all 500 stocks. It's going to allow us to focus on the ones that are have the, an opportunity. We can ignore the other 500, just focus on what has an opportunity. And then we can open up and decide on which ones we want to trade, if any exist. But I love the ability with technology and with software for us to kind of shortcut that process. One of the things I like to do as a trader is I, I like to ignore stocks. 
if they don't have an opportunity, I'm not looking at them. And this allows you to kind of just focus on the opportunity and focus on the ones that have an opportunity. So uh, that in a nutshell is the product. It'll, it'll identify all the product, all the patterns for you. It'll show them to you. It'll explain them to you on the chart. Uh, in addition to that, it's going to have all the scans that will allow you to go in there and kind of find what's there. So what we're going to do here for you uh, uh, today, the Steve Bigelow, I, th I think we underprice. It's normally $499, and that's a one-time cost. Here at the event today, uh, at the webinar today, I'm going to give it to you for $399. Not only am I going to do that, I'm going to back it with like our money back guarantee. So you can try it out free of charge or, well, you pay the $3.99 and we give you a refund if you don't like it. And if you do like it, it's a great risk reward ratio. If you're new to Metastock, if, you, if today's the very first day you heard about Metastock, as part of your purchase, we're going to give you access to our Metastock real time for free. Uh, we'll also give you the Zenith market data. We'll also give you some training to kind of help you figure out how to get everything going. That's called Unleash the Power of Metastock. It's an online course that you can go through. So normally this is $4.99. It's $3.99 here today. And just to recap, it's been highly reviewed. It's one of our most popular products. And um, it's actually been rated one of the high, most popular add-on products for any software, not just Metastock. So I'd encourage you to give it a try. It'll also be included with that software that's you know, our software that we've been working on since the 80s. That's been rated number one since 1993, I think it was, uh, off the top of my head. So give us a call, 800-882-3040. Uh, we, can, we can help you get set up. If you have questions or if you uh, uh, just want to talk to somebody, go to metastock.com slash sales chat. Uh, you can also order it online at metastock.com slash candlestick for a May. I would encourage you to try this, uh, Steve. Thank you for all the work you've done with us over the years. You've been oh. very, very helpful for my trading. Yep, um, no, my, my pleasure. And I can honestly say when they are talking about Metastock in our chat room, they have nothing but good things to say. I mean, they're they're very impressed with, with the capabilities they have as far as finding the good trades. So um, glad to work with you, with you and I'm, um, yeah, I'm, Everybody likes the product, so. Ravi, thank you for the questions about identifying like cup and handles and triangles and rectangles and those kind of things. Get in touch with us. There are some products that actually do that that work with Metastock. So we can give you some more information about that. But thank you for your interest in Metastock too. So anyway, to sum up, uh, $3.99 if you want to try it out. We're going to give you a money back guarantee, which is a great risk reward ratio. I wish I could get that on my actual trades. And um, <laughs> Um, uh, you love it. I hope you do anyway. I hope you like Metastock as much as I do. I want to say thank you, Steve, again. I uh, appreciate your time today. It's always good to have you. And um, for everybody that came, thank you for coming. I hope you learned something. And um, we will see you at the next one. Stay healthy.